Hey, good evening. It's Saturday, July 27th, and welcome back to uh, Everyday Talk 24-7. As you can see, it's just about sun sunset here in the uh, Midlands of South Carolina. I'm gonna have, this is the third in a series of maybe six or seven videos on how pornography is crippling our churches, our families, and our country. This third one is probably the last one I'm going to do on terms of laying out the damages of pornography, how pervasive it is. Then next week, Lord willing, we'll start looking at how we can respond biblically to it. But we have to understand how devastating and far-reaching, how pervasive this ugly sin is. So tonight, pornography is a life of slavery to lust. And as we indicated last night, this life of slavery to lust destroys our families. Literally, our families are being taken apart by pornography, both inside and outside the church. This happens because there's our sinful desires, but we need to understand how these lusts impact us. The human brain stores pornography. This is a Scientific American study I read a number of years ago and just saw it updated. We sto it stores pornography, our brain stores. For comparison, if your brain worked like a digital video recorder, it could hold over three million hours of videos. To put this into perspective, this means that you would have to binge watch continuously for more than 300 years to use up all the storages in your brain. That's a lot of material. And sadly, these images, these memories, they can remain for a lifetime in our brain, polluting, corrupting. There's also another impact to this pornography, which provides an unbiblical sexual stimulation to the brain. According to an article in Neuroscience News, and I'm gonna list the uh, link to this in the description tonight. The stimulation of pornography causes damage to the prefrontal cortex of the brain in adulthood. And this predis predisposes an individual to behave compulsively and make poor decisions. All stemming from this wrong, raw stimulation of pornography. You see, like Eve in the garden, the enemy never tells us about the damage that our choices for pleasure will bring. It only offers us immediate pleasure. And that's what happens here. We never think about the consequences. But here are the consequences. This desire for pleasure, in addition to looking at stuff labeled pornography, it also leads to what I call reactive pornography, where interaction with commercials, advertising, acceptable PG type, PG type movies and videos, these cause pornavic, porno, pornographic, lust-driven responses as well. And these can be just as damaging as something called, that is labeled pornography in terms of the impact. So you see, there's a long-term impact. You combine that with the selfish, ugly desires that pornography inflames. These are just some of the results. As we saw from Ephesians 4.19, these pornographic de desires are never, ever satisfied. There is always a continual driving lust for more. It's one of the reasons why the pornography people have to make their pornography increasingly more uh, gross is because people get used to it and they want something more. Pornography causes men to see women and wives as ob objects who are obligated to fulfill their sexual desires and fantasies. Pornography causes men and women, men, to see women and their wives as objects who are, to be ob who are obligated to fulfill their desires. Women, in effect, become functional slaves in all of life to satisfy their husband's needs and desires. And this goes beyond the sexual scene. 
Sadly, too often, Christians have played right into this, and we encourage this type of slavery and objectification of women because we have a wrong understanding of the biblical concept of submission. This false understanding of submission, which dehumanizes women to the fact that they must obey men in every area, is nothing more than an extension of this desire for lust and power. Pornography causes fathers to view children as servants, the same idea. Pornography causes fathers to view children as servants who are to fulfill their whims and their desires and the lusts of their own corrupted hearts. This is antithetical to living out the gospel. This is exactly what Ephesians 6, 4 warns against, provoking our children to anger. This anger, this desire for lust and to be in control and demand others to be in submission to us, this brings incalculable harm to our children. And so we have children being raised in a performance-based model where their worth is based on their performance. Fathers become angry. And this gives a perverted picture of what a father should be and a perverted picture of who God is. Pornography does incalculable harm to grandchildren and future generations because instead of a legacy of grace and the mercy of God, there's a legacy of tyranny, a legacy of lust, a, leg a legacy of slavish submission. Um, generation after generation sees women objectified and used only for men's pleasure. This corrupts the generations to come. This means that the legacy of pornography is men who are weak, controlling, and abusive. The legacy of pornography is men who are weak, controlling, and abusive. People who are given to control, people who are given to abuse, are weak inside. And horrible examples of what it means to be a man. As we've been saying, pornography is tr a true heart of darkness. If you're thinking about marrying someone, Find out if this individual, this man, what's his history with pornography? Because it will severely impact your marriage and your life going forward and your children. Next week, we'll start to break out of this darkness and into the light of redemption. And there is hope, but we have to see the pervasive scale of pornography, how it dominates all of life. Telling someone to stop looking at pornography will not solve the problem. We have to have a full biblical plan of redemption, gospel-based, based on the work of Christ. But we'll get into that next week. Love your thoughts and your feedback. Please, I value them. This is so important because it's impacting you, your families, your children, your grandchildren, it's one of the reasons why our churches are so pathetically weak. Important things. So I value your thoughts. I pray for all of us. I pray we have a good Lord's Day tomorrow. I pray that God will give us. He will give us, give us redemption from this ugly mess. You have a good night.